So there's where we were in the distance was uh, Farmer Jake. There is Farmer Cat here in the foreground <laughs> doing coning off of ladders. And Farmer Andrea has one where she can reach some of them. But uh, how you doing, Farmer Andrea? I am well. How are you? I am great. Uh, so explain to us a little bit about what we're doing with the Christmas trees right now with this coning, as it's called. Sure. We are actually deconing. Deconing. Yes. Um, and right now we're focusing on Fraser firs. Okay. One of our guests' favorite species for uh, their Christmas trees. Mm -hmm. As you can see, we are in the growing season. Yeah. All of our buds have broken and these trees are indeed growing. You can see the, the brighter, tender growth. So I'm stepping back here, but that tree is about, uh, I'm going to say about 10 feet tall, I'd maybe even more than that. Yeah. And as I come back up close here, you can see that the Frasers, they uh, they actually grow very little amount each year. Yes. So um, this is my finger here. You can see that's probably about two inches of growth. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and you can get a comparison. Here is a, kind of a later breaker, so okay. to speak. These buds broke later than these, and so they're still growing. Right. Um, so... Um, in addition to growth this time of year, trees can also produce their cones. Uh -huh, this yeah. is one that I've already picked off. Um, it's tender when it's mature. If we were to let it go to maturity, it would harden and turn brown and produce seeds. This is how a tree reproduces. You can actually see on this tree evidence of a previous year's cone. Uh -huh. We were not able to make it to this tree last year, I guess. <laughs> um, here might be a better example. Okay, you're right there. There's an example so. of a cone from last year that we didn't get to on this tree. So uh, here we are trying to get the cones this year. Yes. And as I look up here, I can reach a little bit higher and I can see there's the cones. Yes, and so it's typical that the cones are are located usually within the top third of the tree. Uh -huh. um, and if you think about how seeds are dispersed, uh, that's a smart adaptation by the, the conifer species because they're more... Um, so because the cone is higher up, so that the wind can carry yes. the seeds further with the cones yeah. and, and birds can carry it as well. So. Exactly. And so you might wonder why we're picking these and so um, we pick them because we don't want the tree's energy to go into reproduction right now. Mm -hmm. If the tree invests and concentrates its energy into producing seed for these really hundreds of cones, right. uh, that would take away from its growth. I see. And because we hand plant our trees, we're not looking for natural regeneration. It's just not necessary, and it's actually disadvantageous for them to concentrate their energy into seed production. Understood. You might also be wondering why they are producing cones this year and, and when they don't really do it every year. Uh-huh. And it is a tree's, it's a living organism, and just like you and me, Tom, their natural inclination is to survive. Mm -hmm. And if you recall, last year we were in a fairly severe drought. Right, 2016 was a really dry summer. It surely was. Actually, a whole year was pretty dry. A absolutely. And um, so as a result, that really stressed the trees. They, they weren't receiving enough water and they just went into survival mode and in response to that stress started producing these cones. So as a result of the drought, uh, we farmers have an added job this year to decone our Frasers. <laughs> joy, joy. Yes, so they can grow better to be in a living room, a foyer, or home near you. This so particularly season. with the trees that are these 10 foot trees, these taller trees that uh, people want in a foyer or a very uh, cathedral ceiling room, mm -hmm. uh, those are difficult to grow because yeah. they exponentially, the amount of surface area with ladders, it just creates a lot more work for us as farmers to manage them as a, a, a larger crop. It sure does. And especially this, this new growth, this time of year, there are even more challenges. We don't want to damage this new growth. Right. So we have to be really mindful of where we place our bodies and where we place the ladders uh, to not 
damage or break the buds or or new growth in this case right and uh, um, for a little bit of background, you have a lot of education in this, correct? <laughs> yes, I am a forester. I have my MS in forestry. So I love the trees and managing um, this beautiful 200 acre tree farm. Terrific. Yes. Thanks so much, Andrea. Thank you. So it is May 31st. And for folks who are watching this video at Christmas time, I uh, would just remind you that it takes a lot of work to make these beautiful Christmas trees beautiful all year long. Getting your stretches in there, Farmer Jake? As stretching as best I can. <laughs> it's uh, right up near the top. You can see all of those cones that uh, hopefully uh, you can see that on the video that Jake is taking off of there. So we got a lot up on that top area at the very high stretch.